In February 1996, the boxing world was in shock. Tommy Morrison has tested positive for HIV. It was a devastating blow for the 27-year-old former heavyweight world champion who was on course for a multi-million dollar payday against Mike Tyson. To all my young fans out there, I'd ask that you no longer see me as a role model, but see me as an individual that had the opportunity to be a role model and blew it. Blew it with irresponsible, irrational, immature decisions. A decision that one day could cost me my life. Eleven years later, Tommy the Duke Morrison has embarked on what would be the most sensational comeback in the history of a sport that's no stranger to comebacks. The great nephew of John Wayne, from whom he took his ring name, Morrison grew up in the town of Jay, Oklahoma. His first fist fight in a drive-in movie parking lot at the age of five was just the start of a troubled childhood and a life of fighting, from the tough man circuit to the professional ranks. Already with 19 wins to his name, Morrison's big break came in 1989, when he was chosen to appear alongside Sylvester Stallone in Rocky V. Through his role as Tommy Gunn, he gained mainstream popularity. Morrison's first world title came in 1993 against George Foreman. Using a hit-and-run style to avoid Foreman's power, Morrison took the vacant WBO title by unanimous decision. In 1995, he got the chance of another title when he faced Donovan Razor Ruddock for the IBC belt. The Duke's clubbing left hook ultimately helped him to a TKO win. clash with Lennox Lewis followed. Despite Lewis's victory, Don King wanted Morrison to face Tyson, the great white hope against the world's baddest man. It was in the build-up to that fight prior to a bout in Las Vegas that Tommy Morrison's world fell apart. Initially blaming the result on a promiscuous lifestyle, Morrison was caught up in theory after conspiracy theory about how or indeed whether he'd contracted the disease. I was on a downhill spiral there. I had all this information. I knew I was right, and I was telling everybody about it. Everybody thought I was crazy, and I knew I was right. And now all these years later, people are going to finally find out that I was telling the truth and that I wasn't lying, that I'm not crazy. And so you can imagine, uh, you know, the type of vindication I'm going to get once this is over with. Unable to earn a living from fighting, he ultimately ended up convicted of drink-driving offences and drug possession. He served 14 months of a 10-year sentence, some of it on the prison psychiatric ward. Now he's looking to start again. Though many would claim that he's merely in denial, he still believes the original HIV test was inaccurate and claims to have tested negative on numerous occasions since. You know, I never thought I had it to start with. I thought that it was a false positive back then. I think uh, I know for sure, after doing more extensive research, that the reason why I failed the test is because of, uh, you know, different types of steroids that I was taking back then. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's not rocket science. And once I realized that, I got off that stuff and uh, started testing negative. You know, I mean, uh, and that's that. It's just a mistake. The comeback started earlier this year when he gained a license to fight in West Virginia, based on paperwork indicating he was HIV negative. He fought John Castle, winning thanks to his trusty left in round two, while behind on the scorecards. Having knocked off some ring rust, he now has major plans for the future. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm interested in winning, uh, you know, world title. I'm, I, I'm not interested in winning them all. You know, I just want to win one. You want to come back, and uh, I want to. I want to start a pension plan. I think there's going to be probably some uh, some legal action against the Nevada Athletic Commission at some point, and I would like to use those funds to set up a, a, a pension plan for my sport. Everybody comes into this sport to make money, but I'm in a unique position here. I can not only make money, but I can also make a difference, and that's what I want to do. Howdy. 
but before he can make any difference to himself or anyone else, he has to convince the world, and not least the boxing community, that he never had or no longer has the HIV virus. Tommy's scheduled to fight again soon once he's persuaded his detractors of his healthy status. Though many of his views on the disease may be controversial to say the least, he's adamant that even if he was HIV positive, he still wouldn't present a risk to other boxers. There's never been one single documented case in the history of this planet of anybody ever getting in the ring. Why? Because that can't happen. It literally can't happen. It's impossible. You know, if you jumped in there and you were jousting with syringes, it still couldn't happen. I mean, it just couldn't. If successful in his quest to prove himself right and correct what he perceives as a decade-old wrong, Tommy believes his return will come at the perfect time. Never did I, in my wildest imagination, dream that I would get the opportunity to do this again. Or when the opportunity did uh, show its face, I might possibly be in my early 40s and a little too far down the line. But it's ironic that it's happening now. You know, at a time when the heavyweight division is probably the weakest it's been since Mike Tyson came along back in 1985. I mean, I look across the heavyweight division right now, I don't see anybody out there that I can't beat. I mean, it's wide open, wouldn't you agree? Guess he's taking the bath. There's no doubt that Tommy Morrison's lifestyle is more settled than it's ever been. Living with his fiance and manager, Lisa Woodard, the daily routine involves the normal things of everyday life. But at 38, and assuming he can convince someone to fight him and convince the authorities to let him, is it now too late for Tommy the Duke Morrison? Oh, don't let go of me. You know, when George Foreman came back when he was 38 years old, took him eight years to win the title. So I'm come back when I'm 38, and I'm going to do it in two or less. It would take a brave man to put much money on it, but the script of this boxing story is far from finished.